Welcome to another episode of Ral's World of Sense. Today we're doing an overview of the Dofer A163 voltage-controlled frequency divider. This is an audio frequency divider designed to respond to an input signal in the form of a rectangle wave that you will input right about here. Once your signal is patched, the signal is then divided by numbers between 1 and 20 and will then output a rectangle wave with 50% duty cycle at this output down here. Let's get a closer look at the front to see an idea how this works. Now at the top, you have a manual control here that's going to allow you to adjust the divisor right there. This is going to then affect the output that will be coming out over here. Below that, we have a control voltage input right there for modulating the setting that you have up here. You can use an LFO, an envelope, or any other CV source that you might have, like a joystick or a ribbon controller uh, within your Eurorack system. And then over on the right, you actually have a control voltage uh, modulation control right here that is polarized. Now, I know from looking at the front panel, you might see a zero right there, and then a 10 over here. But there's a note in the manual that says if you have some of the modules from the first production run, it'll read zero to 10, but this is actually a polarized input. Um, if you've seen any of the videos we've done in the past, uh, like where I've shown kind of a little bit of the polarizing mixer, or a little bit of the A106-1, or Maybe even you know one of the BBD videos that showed uh, the input of the CV um, has a polarized input. Then you'll get an idea of how this works. Now at the 12 o'clock position will be your zero. At the fully clockwise position will be plus five. So on this side will be plus five, and then over on this side, fully counterclockwise, you'll have minus five. So it allows you to invert the incoming modulation signal if you want to within the patch, okay? So at the bottom, we have probably the two most important um, inputs or inputs and outputs. So we have the input here for your master frequency that'll be coming in here, which is represented by this right there. And then you have your output right here that you will then send off to another place in your Eurorack system. Now, in general, you can use this to kind of generate a sub oscillator. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you can adjust the divider there by which you want your sub octave uh, to be. Now, there's also a note about, um, let's see, subharmonics that you may want to take a look at in the manual because it discusses, you know, why it's uh, a little bit different than what you might expect. So I'll just leave you to explore that as you see fit. So let's go ahead and patch up something so we can kind of see uh, how this sounds and then also just hear how it sounds too. Now in order to do that, uh, as the manual says, we're going to need a rectangle wave. So if you look down at the bottom, I have most of a patch already set up. Now we have an A111, which we're going to be using the uh, rectangle wave or the pulse wave from. And uh, we're going to be patching it right in here. So let me go ahead and patch this. Oh, but let me finish explaining this. So I'm going to patch this into here, and uh, this is going out to two different places. So one of these is going, like this top one right here, is going to an oscilloscope that we're going to be looking at to see what that looks like. And then I think the second one is going to be plugged into our frequency divider, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. So let me patch this in. And then now we actually have some signal. So it's going up into our oscilloscope. You can see that right there. Uh, the output of my oscilloscope is thereby going over to our mixer, which is why we actually have signal. But I don't have it going into my frequency divider yet, so let's get that patched up. So I'm going to patch that into there. There we go. Okay, and then now in the lower section of our multiple, we're going to set it up so that we can actually see uh, the divided signal or the sub signal over here in the second oscilloscope, the one on the right. So let's get that patched up. And for that, I'm going to need one more cable. And I think I already have that set up. It's actually this one right here, lower part of the multiple. 
So you can see right there. So this is going to go up into our A163 and just take the output right there. I'm going to actually slip this all the way down to the bottom. There we go. And now you should be able to see it at our oscilloscope. Now, I'm not entirely certain why uh, the two oscilloscopes are not displaying them in an identical way, uh, but I did uh, verify by jumping over to my tuner section. Let me do this. Oops, jumped right by it. And right there we have C5, just like we do uh, in the example in the manual. And if I jump over to my tuner on this one, there we go, we have C5 as well. So that's going to be our starting point, knowing that we have both uh, actually outputting the same signal. So let me flip back to my single waveform view. And since that's really outside the scope of what we're looking at, we're just going to hear what this sounds like. Um, we can kind of just continue without any issues. Now, we're not hearing our sub yet, so let me get that patched up. That's actually this second copy right there. So I'm just going to patch this over into our VCA, just like that. And there, so we just have a slightly amplified signal right there, because both of these inputs over here are, as we saw before, C5 at our oscilloscope. Now, I'm going to put a graphic up on the screen here uh, because we're going to try to identify some of the uh, sub-octaves or divisors that are useful for you as you're creating a patch. And as you can see right there, you know, the first divisor, which is what we have now, is the C5, so that's what we're hearing. It's just basically the same signal. Now, at a divisor of 2, you're going to have C4. So let's actually see if we can get that going. Now for this, I wasn't actually able to do it by ear, but let me flip over to my tuner and we'll see if we can't dial it in that way. Okay, so there we go. Now let me just adjust my frequency divider until I get a C4 over there. There we go. So now we have a C4, so now that's one octave down. And you hear also that the signal at our VCA has changed. So turn this one all the way down. That is just our one octave down. If I turn this back up, and this down, we have our C5. And there they are together. So you now have a little bit of a fatter signal with one octave down. Now let's see if we can't find a uh, divisor number three. But first let me actually show you what that waveform looks like. So put back to here. And so there you go. And if you look at the peaks, it actually kind of works out because over here on the left, you have about four let's see, peaks and troughs going through the oscilloscope. And on the second one, you have about two. So, you know, one octave down. Okay. So now let's flip back to the tuner and then we'll get the divisor setting of three going which if you look in the manual, that's actually going to be an F3. So let's see if we can get this one going. So I'm going down. There we go. It's about an F3. And now let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to flip over to our waveform view. There we go. You can see now it's a little bit less than two. It's almost like maybe one and one and something, and some change maybe. Okay, let's do one more, and then I'll explain the importance of what these tones are. So the divisor of four is actually going to be a C3. So let me flip back to my tuner. And let's go find that divisor. It's going to be the divisor of four. There we go. So there is our C3, and that would be, let's see, two octaves down from the original signal, which you can kind of hear that now. You can hear two distinct tones at the VCA over here. 
Okay. All right, doing pretty well. Now let's take a look at what that waveform looks like too. And there you go. So now I, can, I could continue through uh, all of these permutations, but as it says in the A163 manual, uh, basically you have from, let's see, it was one to about 20. So at the highest setting, you have about 20. And then you can see on the scope, it's not even visually um, making any kind of sense to us. You know, I could try to zoom out a little bit and see what it shows me. But at this point, it's not actually showing me what looks like a rectangle wave. Let me see if I can get back to my original magnification of one milliseconds. Uh, pass it up. Let's try it one more time. There we go. But the idea is now you can manually adjust it according to what you see fit. Kind of like that. Or you can look for those specific intervals. Now, the reason that those intervals are actually listed in the manual the way they are, let me turn this down so we can do a little wrap up, uh, is that these actually correspond to the pitches uh, that are in a minor uh, chord scale for that specific pitch of a C. Uh, so knowing this, now you can then make the sub octaves that you wind up creating with this a little more musical for your compositions. So at any rate, uh, for the basics of the A163, uh, that's going to actually wrap this up. Uh, in the next video, we'll do a little bit more demonstrations, uh, maybe look at a sort of standard patch that you would have where you're creating, you know, a sub oscillator, uh, and then maybe hearing it with the VCA and, you know, playing a little synth line or something like that. Um, and then we'll look a little bit at modulation before we do a few other things with the A163. So stay tuned for that and keep on patching out there.